Hello, everyone, and welcome to Western Computers Dynamics 365 Finance Short Overview Series. My name is Joe Woodmansey, and I am a senior solution architect with Western Computer for the product known as Dynamics 365 for finance and supply chain management. Today, we'll be focused on the finance portion of this particular application. So let's take a look at what we mean about D365 Finance at a glance. First and foremost, this is a series of Microsoft Azure cloud-based apps that are designed to optimize the financial processes and health of your organization. These software applications are inherently global in nature, so inherently multi-company or legal entity, multi-currency, multilingual. So if you operate in multiple countries or on a global scale, this is a product that can easily scale to handle all of your legal entities, your currency needs, your language needs, all in one financial management application. This would include traditional financial modules such as general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, fixed assets, as well as very robust financial reporting via something we call financial dimensions. And we'll take a look at that when we get into the short software demonstration part of this presentation. This product for finance can operate in unison with Dynamics 365 for supply chain management, or it could be used as a standalone financial system with imports from an industry specific operational platform. So if you plan on keeping your operational system, whatever that might be, this financial system can integrate with that in a number of different ways. It also includes analytic workspaces and something called KPIs or key performance indicators via the Power BI platform, which is Microsoft's analytics reporting engine, also Azure cloud-based. If we took a quick look at what are some of the capabilities that Dynamics 365 for Finance offers, first and foremost, we'd see that it offers role-based workspaces that contain all the tasks someone might need for a given function, as well as built-in analytics and predictive insights. We'll also take a look at this in the demo overview, but the idea here is that for a given job or role, everything that someone needs is in one place. It does offer guided financial close processes to ensure a timely and thorough period close process. So a series of checklists or steps that are needed to go through before you can effectively close a financial period. It has Office 365 integration including Excel import and export capabilities, budget management, and Microsoft Word-based templates for things like document customization, where you might wanna send a statement to a customer, but you might wanna do a unique format with Microsoft Word, and D365 for Finance offers you that capability. And finally, additional financials apps capabilities, things like budgeting and forecasting, revenue recognition for those industries that might need it, cash and bank management, expense management. So in addition to the core capabilities, things like GL, AP, AR, fixed assets, there are some other capabilities such as these modules which extend those base capabilities from a financial management standpoint. So with that quick definition and overview of capabilities, what I'd like to do is just do a quick software overview of the D365 for Finance modules. I'm going to go to a web browser. In this particular case, it's my Chrome browser. And the first thing that I'm gonna talk about are these workspaces that we talked about in the overview. And as I mentioned, these are role-based. They're intended to help someone in a specific role by giving them everything that they need to do their job effectively and help you manage the financial health of your organization. The first one that I'm gonna go into is customer credit and collections. And this is just to show you that for a given company or legal entity, and remember we can choose from a number of these if we have a multinational or global type of deployment, we can see various types of things that are being pushed out to us on this homepage. So things like 
the number of open activities or cases that I might have assigned to me? How many customers are over their credit limit? How many collection letters do we have out there to send out? As we scroll over, we can start to see embedded visualizations like my AR aged balances visualization. Different types of balances, promise to pay coming from the accounts receivable system. And then some embedded tiles that we have coming here from Power BI. Again, that's Microsoft's cloud Azure based analytics engine. Here it's embedded within Dynamics 365 for finance right on someone's workspace. And then finally coming over, we can see that we might have something like a listing or inquiry screens that are important to someone in this type of a role. How many customers do I have overdue? What do my age balances by customer look like? How many customers do I have on hold? So all just being pushed out to a workspace, including links that we might have here of exits that we might want to go to that are important to us in our role. So that's what a workspace is. Dynamics 365 for Finance offers a number of those that are role-based that help someone manage the financial health of your particular organization. So I'm going to close out of that and I'm going to do a quick review. We talked about this being a series of apps or software applications that are geared towards financial management. Things like accounts payable, accounts receivable, your cash and bank management. As we scroll down, we see expense management. We see fixed assets. We see general ledger. And we're actually going to go ahead and set focus on this particular module just as an example of some unique capabilities that D365 for finance offers. Now, as we would expect in any financial management module, we could certainly come in and be able to define our chart of accounts, our natural accounts, what are revenue accounts, what are expense accounts. D365 for finance offers something very unique, and these are called financial dimensions. If I scroll into these, these would be user-definable elements that extend the reach of your chart of accounts without having to add a new account every time you want to measure something new or you want to track a new type of information. So think of these as extensions to your natural accounts, maybe things like business unit or things like department. So as we scroll down, we can see that we have these user definable dimensions, item group, job skills, etc. Once we have these defined, we can put these out into what we call sets. So financial dimension sets would be combining these pieces of information. So for example, business unit, the business unit dimension set is a combination of your main account and the financial dimension known as business unit. Same thing is true of department, main account and department. But we can get more sophisticated here. For example, we might have main account plus item group, business unit, department, and cost center. So think of this as wanting to track additional information with anything that might post out to the general ledger that's coming from the various sub-ledger systems like AR, AP. What we can then do is direct these towards different parts of our chart of account. For example, for revenue, we want these dimensions. For expense, we want perhaps a different set of dimensions. All of those can then be used in my financial reporting engine. And what I'm actually going to do is come over and switch browsers here just to show you that we can run in a different browser here. This one happens to be Internet Explorer. And what I could do is also drill down on that general ledger module, go into inquiries and reports, go to my financial reports, and you can see that I've got a financial report that's been written here with the embedded financial report writer that's part of D365 for finance. This will take advantage of those financial dimensions. So as I scroll down on a report, you can see this particular one was generated in 1130 of 2019. As I drill into this, we see major categories. So this would be an income statement type of report for sales. Let's say we want to drill down on that. 
we now are able to drill down and what we're seeing is product sales by home, by auto. This is an example of that drill down capability using, for example, a line of business type of dimension. So now I could drill into something like auto and actually see those by period. So having those financial dimensions, user definable financial dimensions, lets me slice and dice my financials in any way that I want to with the embedded financial report writer. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And then the last point that I wanna make builds upon this topic of analytics that we talked about with Power BI. So what I'm going to do is actually scroll over here back to the initial browser that I was on. And this time, we are going to go to a specific workspace that is called the CFO Overview. Embedded right within Dynamics 365 for Finance would be my Power BI dashboard that is geared towards someone like a CFO in your organization. So this would be the ability to come in and look at metrics and analytics and be able to drill down and look around. So as you can see, as this loads, I have a series of metrics or KPIs, key performance indicators up here at the top that are showing me things like my current ratio, my gross margin, my debt to assets. And then I can see embedded visualizations of different types. So this is all coming from the Power BI analytics engine, building upon that Dynamics 365 for finance, those operational modules that we saw. So we could go into different types of tabs here across the bottom, for example, revenue and expense insights. And this will show me things like a different viewpoint of the data that's being displayed here and shown. In this particular case, you'll see some visualizations as this loads. And this is a great way of looking at this in a geographical type of viewpoint as well. And of course, with Power BI, as we filter or click on something, you can see here I'm hovering over my category called cost of goods sold. And as I select just that, then the rest of my visualizations, my numbers, my key performance indicators are also all going to change and show me just those numbers that are relating to that category. So that's an example of Power BI being embedded in your D365 for finance application. So with that, I'm going to close out of this. I just wanted to say thank you for joining us for this short series showing some of the capabilities of Dynamics 365 for finance and the apps that Microsoft has produced that help you manage the financial health of your organization. Please feel free to reach out to us. Again, my name is Joe Woodmansey, and I thank you for joining us today.